Let me begin with a story. In the 1980s, at the height of the Troubles in Northern Ireland, I was invited as a young professor of philosophy in Ireland to come to Derry, a very divided city at the time, and moderate a workshop between Republican and Loyalist paramilitary prisoners. During the workshop, one of the Republican prisoners told of how one night he was asleep in his bed when a group of uh, loyalist paramilitaries broke into the house, bound and gagged him, blindfolded him, threw him into the boot of a car and drove him to a barn outside of Derry City. They strapped him to a chair and he was about to be shot. And before he was, he asked if he could smoke a last cigarette. And his assassin consented, gave him a cigarette. And as he smoked the cigarette, he told the story of how he had become involved in the Republican violent movement. He told of how his grandfather had been brutally tortured and assassinated, of how his father had been incarcerated, of how his mother had had a nervous breakdown and become an alcoholic, of how his brother had been kneecapped and maimed for the rest of his life. And he went on until he finished his cigarette. And when he had, he waited for the gun to go off. But it didn't. There was no sound, no movement. He waited for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, still no sound. Eventually he managed to free himself, turned around, and there was nobody there. The barn was empty, and he walked home. And when he finished speaking in the workshop, Another man stood up, a loyalist paramilitary prisoner, and he said, I was that assassin. And I would have shot you, but I couldn't shoot you. Because when I heard your story, I realized it was my story. I was very struck by this exchange and by the impossible hospitality and empathy that had transpired in that room. And so a number of years later, uh, I set up a project called the Guestbrook Project in Boston College, where we ran over a number of years a series of interdisciplinary seminars, conferences. We published several books and journal issues. We held an international poetry and music festival. We set up an international blog site based on the theme of hosting the stranger, based on the fact that in most European languages, uh, the word for guest and for enemy is the same. Xenos in Greek, hostis in Latin, giving rise to both hostility and hospitality, same root. Guest in Germanic languages and so on. And the purpose of the project is to try to understand how and why and when this impossible act or wager of hospitality can take place. When cycles, historical cycles of violence and revenge and hostility give rise to that miraculous moment of hosting the stranger. And a second uh, story that comes to mind that has always very much informed our project is that of chancing your arm. This goes back to 1492 when a great civil war was waging in Ireland and the Earl of Kildare, uh, Garrod Moore Fitzgerald, uh, hounded and eventually besieged the Earl of Butler in Dublin Cathedral. And at one point, he said to himself, this must end. This can't go on, this endless cycle of bloodletting and vengeance. So he asked Earl, the Earl of Butler to cut a hole in the door. And he said, I'm going to take off my armor, and I'm going to stretch my bare arm through the hole in this door. And you can either cut it off, or you can shake my hand. If you cut it off, the war continues. If you shake my hand, the war ends. He chanced his arm, 
and the Earl of Butler shook his hand and the war ended. These two stories are about that impossible act of the enemy becoming the guest. And what we're trying to do with Guestbook at the moment is to extend the project beyond an academic interdisciplinary uh, exchange to a more global initiative where we invite young people from different sides of divided cities and communities throughout the world, Derry, London, Derry in Northern Ireland, Mitrovica and Srebrenica in the Balkans, Jerusalem in the Middle East, Kirkuk, Dotco, Johannesburg and others, where young people can engage in a work of creative imagination, where instead of just telling history, they make and remake history. And they do it in the following way, using very basic flip cameras and iPhones and editing equipment on their computers, young people, as only young people of this generation can, are invited to break the cycle of transgenerational wounding and revenge and violence by making little movies, four to five minutes, in two stages. The first, where they tell their respective stories of hurt, woundedness, uh, hostility. And then in a second movement, and this is really where the Guestbook Project comes into its own, they reinvent it together from the ingredients of their divided history, the Battle of the Boyne, or the Siege of the Wall of Derry, or the Battle of Kosovo, or the, 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 the Siege of Jerusalem. They reinvent a new story set in contemporary times where the old cycle of violence is overcome with a new story. And our hope is that with an award announced in 2015, we will be um, encouraging and inviting young people uh, with the most basic technological means to make movies, send them to us. We post them on our website where people can interact internationally and engage in, in dialogue. And then we invite the winners to Boston where we announce the award. The effort of this being to encourage them to chance their arms, to tell their stories, and then make that impossible leap of hospitality, faith, trust, and imagination in the possibility of something new.